Hello everybody and welcome to my first YouTube video. Um, so it's just going to be a bit of a chatty video. I thought a good place to start would be to just talk through my cancer diagnosis, how it all happened, um, how I noticed it, my initial doctor's appointment, my initial hospital appointments, my biopsy, um, just stuff like that because I think when I first got diagnosed it would have been so great to watch YouTube videos like this just because you're so desperate to connect with other people and there's lots of blogs and Instagrams and that sort of thing out there but I think YouTube is that bit more intimate um, Excuse how I look My eye- I finished chemo a month ago and my eyebrows fell out like about an hour ago I, I've been out for brunch this morning and I was just taking my makeup off to get into bed to have a nap because I'm absolutely knackered all the time still and um, all my eyebrows like just came off onto my makeup wipe and I was just like brilliant I'm just so over it I don't care like no eyebrows no eyelashes tiny bit of hair excuse my nails they look like absolute rubbish spent ages writing down everything I can remember about exactly what happened just because I knew I'd be filming this and then be like I can't remember so yeah, this one is literally just going to be all about the diagnosis. I was going to do it about my cancer journey, but then I realised that video would be probably about 10 hours long, so that's not going to work. But yeah, so I'll just get going. Yay. I was on holiday in Menorca, Mallorca, Menorca, Menorca, I think, with my family, and I was... We were sat down having lunch and I literally had like one sip of alcohol and I got a pain in my chest and it sort of went through into my back as well and I was like, hmm, that's weird. And then I noticed that like as the holiday went on it kept happening and like that, I don't know, I kind of ended up linking it to alcohol, like that pain keeps coming back when I drink alcohol. Yeah, so I came back and I went to the doctors and I saw a doctor who I'd never seen before. I said, you know, I keep getting this pain when I drink alcohol, do you think, like, what do you think it could be, basically? And she sort of laughed it off and just said, why don't you just stop drinking alcohol? To be fair, like, uh, maybe I should, but, like, I still kind of know what, like, I want to know what it is. You know when something is up with your body. I'm not the sort of person to go to the doctors about random things, like a pain in my chest when I drink alcohol, but I did, and obviously I'm so glad I did. And she said, oh, maybe it's anxiety, maybe you, you were making it up in your head, that sort of thing. So I thought, okay, well, yeah, maybe. I don't drink that much, but, like, I'm 22 years old, so obviously I go out with my friends drinking and, like, out for dinner or whatever. If I just have one drink, I would still get that pain. And I was like, this is actually really annoying and, like, I don't know, kind of stopping me from socialising that much. So I went back and I saw a different doctor. He gave me some... Um, painkillers and I just kept taking the painkillers he just said like come back in a few months and like we'll see how you're getting on with it sort of thing so I came back and I was like it's no better the painkillers they don't get rid of the pain um, and it's getting worse I've noticed I've got like almost like a tight chest um, or like I can feel something there all the time I could almost feel like a bump in my chest like something was pushing my bone out and it was like almost felt like something that I wanted to like get out or get rid of. So I told him that. He just sent me away again. He said, you know, just come back in a few weeks. We'll see how it see how it is. I just think he had no idea what it was. And then I was at work and I noticed. So I was feeling my neck and I noticed that I had like a lump in my neck. I rang the doctor and I said to the receptionist, you know, can you leave a message for my doctor and just say that I found a lump in my neck. Is it anything to be worried about? Shall I pop in? And she phoned back almost straight away and said, Can you come in now? And I was like, It's like dramatic, but yeah, okay. So I came in straight away and I saw a different doctor. She, I, she was really weird. She gave me a cream and I was like, well, That's really like not helpful at all for a lump in my neck. But anyway, I made another appointment to see my original doctor and he took a feel of the lumps and he was like oh there's actually quite a few lumps in your neck there I hadn't noticed it because I mean do you notice a lump in your neck 
probably actually shouldn't probably should but I mean I guess I didn't know what my neck was supposed to feel like because the lumps had probably been there for quite a while so I just thought like was a hard bit in my neck or that's normal I mean that is when he said to me have you googled this and I was like no and he was like so do you know what it could be and I was like no and he was like well it could be lymphoma so what I'm gonna do is refer you to the lymphoma clinic at Southampton Hospital just to rule it out just to make sure just so that they can just take a look and I'm sure it won't be blah 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 it's just to rule it out doesn't matter you know nothing to be worried about at all so I was like okay fine Monday the 22nd of January at 10 a.m. I went to the lymphoma clinic and it was in the oncology department and at this point literally I didn't even know what the word oncology means and so I went to the oncology department of the hospital and we were on the wrong level <laughs> and I walked into like the wrong section of the hospital where it was um like people getting their um, chemo and like people waiting to have their chemo there was obviously people with no hair there was people plugged into their drip sat on the chair getting chemo like obviously looking really poorly they had sick bowls and stuff like that and I remember just being petrified like I can't believe that I've ended up in this like I can't believe like that I am in this I don't know how to explain it I don't know how like, I've gone from my normal life to being in hospital in, like, an oncology department. I don't know, it just felt really weird and, I guess, out of place is the word. And I went upstairs to the place where I was supposed to be, to the lymphoma clinic. And I remember just sitting and looking around and everyone was literally about, like, 90 years old. And everybody looked really poorly. I just remember thinking, like, this is just like ridiculous I feel so out of place um but then thinking that doesn't matter like I'm obviously never going to be coming back here because obviously I don't have cancer so then I saw the doctor and I saw like the top guy Prof Johnson and um he like felt my neck and asked me some questions and I told him about like the pain drinking alcohol um told him like basically what had brought me there and I was like I'm just gonna send you downstairs to get an x-ray and also I had a couple of blood tests yeah I went back in to see Prof Johnson and he looked a bit serious and he was like okay so in the x-ray has showed that you have got some masses in your chest and I was like like what like literally what the hell me masses in my chest big ones as well they're about like 10 centimetres big, the biggest one, in my chest. Like, that is ridiculous to me anyway. Um, it's not anymore, but at the time I was like, what the hell? I knew I was seeing the top guy, so like he, he knew what he was on about. And that's kind of when he said to me, like, now I'm about 90% sure that like this is cancer. Um, you're gonna have to have some pretty nasty treatment to get rid of it like but he was really nice he's bloody lovely like the kindest man I have ever met maybe I just think that because he basically saved my life but anyway um he was like I'm so sorry to for you to have to go through this not his fault at all and he's helping me but he was just so sorry and it was lovely but you know he was like you're gonna have to have some chemotherapy to get rid of this determine like what type of cancer it is you are gonna have to be booked in for a biopsy so you can see like it's kind of faded a lot but that was where I had the biopsy he told me it will be like a quick procedure you'll be awake for it um, they're literally just gonna come in and take a little bit of the lymph node so that they can put it under a microscope and determine exactly like what type of lymphoma you have got it changed last minute and I was like panic stations because I thought I was going to be awake for it and I've never been put to sleep for an operation before. I was also scared of like how poorly I was going to feel when I woke up but um, 
I wake up from the biopsy. I think I was asleep for like two or three hours. Mum was just waiting, like in a reception sort of place. And I woke up in recovery and I literally opened my eyes and I went, Jesus Christ, I'm starving. They went into, into the reception and was like, um, Maria Smith, uh, your daughter wants her Pringles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got my Pringles. And then I think you're supposed to stay in for like a couple of hours, but I was like so fine. They just let me go home straight away. Anyway, you then like wait for... I had to wait a couple of weeks, maybe, I think it was a couple of weeks, for my biopsy results, and you get a phone call, well, I got a phone call from Prof Johnson, and he was like, so, it's Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, it's stage 2A. Next time I went to the hospital is when I was, like, shown where you get the treatment and stuff. Some, like, social workers from Teenage Cancer Trust came and met me. And they were like, oh, we're going to take you down to where you're going to be having your treatment. Um, so they, like, came and collected me. I think this is sort of the point where it all, like, sunk in that it was actually happening. Like, Prof was like, okay, so you're going to be starting treatment on Tuesday. And I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, the social worker came and got me. And my mum and dad were there as well. And they took me down. And I like burst into tears. This was the first time I'd actually cried about it, I think. And, um, I, yeah. <laughs> and the, I remember the social worker being like, oh, do you want a minute? Like, just with your mum and dad? And I was like, no, no, take me down. I hate crying. I'm just not a crier. And I wasn't going to do it there and then in the hospital around people, blah, blah, blah. So anyway. I went straight down and I remember the woman being like to me, so there's going to be people in there getting their chemo, there's going to be people in there who have got no hair and I remember thinking, oh my bloody god, people with no hair, like, mm. I just, I don't know, I was like scared of seeing it and then <laughs> here I am, no hair, putting it on the internet everywhere, like, I don't know, I don't know why I was frightened of seeing it. Yeah, weird. I also, like, told all my friends that day as well, so I text, I told everyone over text, like, thank God for text. So I text, like, in a, in my friend's group chat, and a couple of people separately as well, just being like, I've been told today that I've got cancer, um, I know it's a massive shock, blah blah blah, but, like, please don't be too upset because I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna be fine, um, like, the, the, Doctors promised that I'm going to be fine, like, and it's, like, really treatable cancer, um, just said that sort of thing, really. Um, I didn't tell everyone face to face, so to be fair, I don't know what people's reactions were like, um, to being told that their best friend has cancer, but I should imagine it's not easy. Being diagnosed with cancer literally seemed like years ago to me, because I've literally changed so much as a person since then, so... I don't know, like I don't, if it's quite foggy in my mind to be honest, so all of this might be a bit mixed up and like I can't quite remember when things were and what order things went in, but anyway, I hope it's kind of useful in some way. Um, and I'm thinking about doing some other YouTube videos about stuff like um, treatment, side effects, hair loss, hair growth because my hair is growing now. Um, nutrition, um, makeup and stuff because doing your makeup when you've got no eyebrows, no eyelashes, no hair is somewhat different to doing it when you've got eyelashes, eyebrows and hair as you can probably imagine. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my first video. I've literally filmed it on my phone in my bedroom. I did light a candle though. <laughs> That's quite funny to be honest, you can't even see it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my first video and please subscribe if you want to see more.